Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today we have looks at consciousness cycles, forcing of atmospheric dynamics and chemistry, but we're still focused on our star, and the geomagnetic storms are still rolling on for a third day in a row. Let's start there and watch the last 24 hours on our star. Only significant eruptive event was up north, and the filament broke stability to the north, away from the Earth. This is the longest these sunspots have gone without significant flaring and CME production in more than two weeks, but we're getting another chance to see the critical nature of magnetism in solar storm science. So we already went over how the stronger initial storm had actually lower plasma pressure than the weaker storm in the middle of this chart here, but the magnetic field angle caused the first one to be bigger, and we've got bigger storms again now on the right side of the chart. But look, the solar wind has been dying back down, purple. So strong storm at the onset, weak storm at the peak plasma speed, and then strong storm again this morning as the speed dies out. No significant density spikes of further CME impact here in the gold color, but up here in blue, this is the why. The magnetism flipped back. Nothing else. And now, reporting this twice in one week, I really hope it's in your head. One component of the solar storm is the peak physical characteristic, speed density, temperature, but the magnetism tells us if Earth's field will deflect it or couple with the energy. South-facing magnetism is when our planet takes the hits and it overrules the physical. Folks, despite the promising look of these young incoming sunspots on the south, they have not flared at all, and when you compare them to the monster on the north, there actually really is no comparison. It is directly facing Earth today, and despite the fact that it has taken the last day and a half off, it's directly facing Earth today. We're watching for solar flares as it still has the magnetism to produce X-class events. Let's go to the jet stream next because it's starting to dip across the United States. The southward push in the east allows cold air to slide south from the Arctic and just sit there. And look how much it's bending in the coming three days. Yep, while we're warmer than average out west, this is not going to be fun in the East. Up first in the articles today is one I figured a lot of people at this channel would appreciate, the grand cycles of consciousness and the universe. Rare to see stuff like this published, and if that sounds like it's up your alley, it is. Link below. Top story today is the major impact of the sun, volcanoes, ENSO, and NAO on the atmospheric dynamics and chemistry over the Mediterranean. All show significant forcing, but here's where you need to remember the dozens of papers on solar forcing of ENSO and NAO, and the several studies on geomagnetic impact to silica-rich magma viscosity in terms of volcanic eruptions. This paper is essentially telling us that the sun hits this climatological feature directly and indirectly times three. Folks, we are one week away from the premiere of the Disaster Cycle documentary at Observer Ranch. What happened before, what's happening now, and what's coming next. The full public release online is just a few more weeks off. Thanks to goldobservers.com, it's going to be free for everyone to watch. Gold and silver are surging despite artificial suppression. When the collapse begins, 99% of humans are going to consider them currency for bartering. And in the aftermath, Gold reflects radiation, and silver purifies water and releases antimicrobial ions when it touches blood. It's a key prep item for the advanced survivor, and they are still price matching on silver over at goldobservers.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.